when I first got in, I didn't really know what I was doing. Then I just started door knocking and um, you know, I, I was able to get, you know, like $10 million worth of door knocks. Real estate is all about becoming and remaining top of mind. And in this video, we're going to give you the blueprint of exactly how to do that. I'm bringing on a very special guest, Kyle Mark from Vancouver, BC. And he talks about exactly what he does to invest into his business in terms of marketing properties and how he markets them in order to stand out amongst the thousands of other agents in his market center, which is one of the most competitive markets in North America. So what we're going to break down is his incredible video strategies and how you can introduce this into your business and some of the best practices that nobody talks about that are going to allow you to differentiate yourself from all of the other agents in your market so that you become the one that people think about every single time that they think about selling a property because he is very listing heavy. So we're going to dive into content as well as customer journey and what he's doing to win listings above other agents in this hyper competitive market. So before we bring on Kyle, I want to mention two quick things. Number one, you're going to want to check the description because I'm going to link all of his profiles below. He's got incredible content that we're going to reference in this video and you want to make sure to check that out so that you can use this as a reference for your own market. And secondly, if you like the strategy that he talks about and want to know more about it, you can book a call privately one on one with him on Zoom using the calendar link below and talk about what it's like to partner with them. So without further ado, let's bring on Kyle and talk about how you can build an unforgettable experience for marketing your clients properties and the importance of reinvesting into your business and not looking at everything as an expense. Welcome back guys to another incredible video tour. Today we've got on a very special guest from Vancouver, Canada up here with myself and really excited to dive into a principle that I think a lot of agents need to be more mindful of, which is the importance of investing into your business and being able to build a very credible portfolio that separates you from every other agent in your market center. So we're gonna be diving deep into how Kyle has been able to do that and how he's standing out and crushing it with his listing videos and so much more. So Kyle, really excited to have you on here today, man. What's going on? Yeah, I appreciate uh, you having me on here. Excited to just chat with you and uh, deliver some uh, valuable information to everybody out watching. Definitely. It's been exciting to watch your journey, especially as we, came, we became partners and being able to see the content you're putting out there. And, and, you know, it's very evident as somebody like myself that's in the content space, how much, you know, time, energy, effort and, and money you're investing into your business. So, you know, before we start diving into the tactical, I'd love for you to just give people a, a brief kind of rundown of who you are, where you're from, what kind of got you to this point, and then we can start diving in. Yeah, so uh, my name is Kyle Mark uh, out here in uh, Vancouver. I've uh, been in the business uh, coming up to seven years, but I, I don't really start or consider myself a seven year agent because, uh, you know, you have that, you know, part time, full time differentiator. So I was started uh, 11 years in construction at my Red Seal trade in construction, uh, then moved into uh, firefighting. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, suffered a couple very de debilitating uh, injuries at a couple structure fires that have uh, put me out of uh, commission. So, you know, when I first got my license, you know, was doing both, wasn't really doing any business whatsoever. It was fun, something on the side. But once I had my first injury uh, back in uh, 2019, um, you know, I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back from it. So I said, you know, I need to figure out something else. And then 2020 is when I really started to, you know, uh, look at my business figure out what I need to do. And I, I knew that I needed to put time and I needed to put money in uh, to be able to stand out. So now, uh, you know, coming into, you know, I consider myself year four and I've uh, been having very steady growth since then and always looking to try to better my business. And that's the big reason why I jumped to, over to EXP and uh, the Wolfpack with you guys. That's awesome, man. And it's it's crazy to see, you know, what this can do, especially as you start having some of these unexpected injuries, what, you know, models like this can do to give you that protection and that security. But, you know, I'm, I'm excited because you and I built our businesses and, and kind of founded them on the same um, kind of mentality and notion of over delivering on value. So do you want to kind of dive into, you know, what you were maybe previously doing when you weren't gaining momentum and then sort of the shift that happened that started making you kind of invest more into your business and what that looked like? Yeah, I, I know that when I, I mean, the biggest thing for a lot of people out there, if you want to succeed, 
uh, in the business, you need to pour all your time. I know, you know, before when you're part time and you're doing something on the full time, I know it's it's nice having, you know, some side income, but you will not be able to get to your potential if you don't throw everything to it. So um, in, you know, in 2020, I started, you know, looking back at my business before you know, doing pretty much what everyone else was doing, you know, the t same templated feature seats, the same sort of, uh, you know, listing videos, didn't really know much about marketing, things of that nature. So first and foremost, I started looking at a different brokerage, uh, changed that. And the, and the big key, I knew that I wanted to stand out. I knew I needed to get FaceTime. Um, and I partnered with uh, my, my video team who I work with now, which is Untitled Marketing. I do want to give a shout out to them because they do things not like anyone else in the space. They're always wanting to do something different. You know, when we go on and do a listing, we have four people out there to shoot different angles, all this sort of stuff. It costs money, but I knew I, it was all about starting to build a portfolio. Uh, that's awesome, man. I, th I think it's really important to, you know, understand the concept of investing into your business. And a lot of agents say that they want to stand out from the rest of the agents, but they're not really doing anything to make that happen. And I think a lot of people kind of biasly and subconsciously think just because they know that they care, they know that they're going to do a good job, that somehow the public perceives that without even knowing them. But you have to show that to them. And I think it's something that not too many people are doing, which is, you know, differentiating themselves and, and genuinely looking with an unbiased lens. Do I look different than everybody else? Am I standing out? Does my quality step a cut above? And I think, you know, you touched on a really important point that I've had a lot of, you know, conversations with agents about, which is, I did something very similar to where regardless of price point, that's why I chose the color purple. I wanted to create a luxurious experience, no matter who you are. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had clients that were buying $150,000 condos south of the city. And then I was working with $15 million listings and the quality, you know, I was always using the same team and going above and beyond. And while that might make the immediate profit margins on the smaller end smaller, but what it does is that long-term portfolio starts to demonstrate your quality of work to other people. And you never know who those people know. And I find, I see a lot of people saying, well, when I get a, a listing over a million dollars, I'm going all in, I'm going full tilt. I'm going to bust out everything. And then for the smaller price points, they just do the same as everybody else. Upload to the MLS, let it become a sitting duck. But you don't know if that $500,000 homeowner knows somebody that owns a $5 million property. Mm -hmm. And that experience that people are providing is a direct reflection of your quality of work. So, you know, what did that look like for you? Because I know that you're starting to do these incredible videos on, you know, property tours and things like that. Can you give people some advice on what they should be doing to properly market properties in order to really differentiate themselves? Yeah, I, I think you touched on a good point too. Like for those who say, if I hit a million dollar, $2 million, whatever, then I'm going to go all out. But you know, the adage is like, if you haven't done that before, you're going to, you're going to drop the ball. So it's like, what does all out mean if you haven't done it? So you like, oh, I have all these ideas. So you get the $1 million listing. Who are you using for your videographer? What's your branding? It takes hours and time to put all that stuff together. And if you don't have it in place and you don't have a slow roll, it's so all encompassing to get that brand. And similarly to you, like you have the purple, I use, you know, the, the blue and gold uh, for that luxurious feeling. And uh, I, I think it is you, you know, of course, like what I spend is a lot of money. Not everybody has that. And I, I totally understand that, but there's little things that you can control to get you up to that place. Um, but having that product is, is so important. And for me, you know, social media, uh, has really helped me with getting, you know, the word out. Um, and another, you know, point I wanted to talk about, like, I don't have a massive following. I think I have uh, 800 followers, but it's such a resume and I get, it's my biggest, uh, earner, um, in terms of uh, referral. Like it's always, you're always keeping top of mind. I'm always posting and people come up, Hey, I got a friend. Hey, I got questions. And just because you don't have 10,000, 20,000, it doesn't matter. And I don't have a lot of engagement either. People want to see that you're posting, you keep top of mind and it's a resume when they see it's like high quality. So can you be in control of your Instagram profile with, you know, nice photos, nice, you know, graphics from like Canva or whatever, a hundred percent. It's cheap. It's easy. Can you be in control of, um, just, you know, your listing material, how you look, how you like present yourself. Can you be in control of education and educating yourself, taking the time, you know, using Mike's social agent Academy, whether you're within the Wolfpack or outside of it, you, those are things you can a hundred percent control. You have a lot of free resources. You have paid resources that hundred percent you're in control. That's like, if you want to do the work, it's there for you.
Hundred percent, man. I think it's it's a really good talking point we can jam out about, which is, you know, there's going to be people that have the funds to invest, and there's going to be people that maybe are on a more lean budget. And I think, you know, I, I could toss in my two cents about either, and then I'd love to know your feedback. Which is, you know, for me, the principle that I always use is I took thirty percent of every commission check and reinvested it back into marketing, advertising, and branding. So that was kind of a staple of my business as I started to build momentum in order to make sure that I'm consciously growing. You know. I see a lot of people that get 30% of the commission, they go spend it on some yeah. Louis Vuitton bag or some BS. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, you're, you, this is a business. This is not a hobby. You can't be casual about it. You have to, again, reinvest everything that you humanly can to grow. And I think that's something that you should live by for your first three years until you get to the point where you can have some more disposable income. Now, for the people that don't have a budget, because I started without a budget, and I think there's a lot of things people could do that they're not quite thinking about. Like, for example, um, you know, I found this videographer that was doing insane videos for me, property tours of $5 million properties, and we brought out the cars and we did everything. And all that I did was I went on Facebook and I went into some Calgary Facebook group and I said, hey, does anybody know a local videographer looking to build their portfolio um, and has good experience and good quality? And I got all these names and one repeatedly came up and he agreed to do videos for me no matter how long it took to shoot or edit for $200 Canadian per mm. video. Sometimes it was a four hour shoot with an eight hour edit but I was able to then connect him with all these other agents so he was able to charge full price to them. There's very easy ways to be able to get yourself into that ecosystem without having to spend a lot. And then I did similar to you. As I started making more money and investing that 30% back into the business, I went to a next tier video team that had multiple people, multiple angles, drones, all that good stuff. And I think again, when you, you know, it's really funny because when you look at brokerages like Compass that preach about the marketing, it's literally, they are Canva designs. Like their entire yeah. business is built off Canva designs. And, you know, you can outsource this stuff for very cheap to really make yourself look, but there's, there's a principle I think a lot of people struggle with, and I'd love to know your thoughts on this, which is investment versus expense. And I think a lot of people look at, you know, a uh, five hundred to a thousand dollars for a video, or you know, a three hundred and fifty dollar listing package for brochures and things like that, or you know, ten dollars a day, twenty dollars a day to market that property on, you know, Facebook ads and things like that. They always look at it as an expense. And they're looking at it as an expense because inherently, and this goes to another subject that we're going to dive into, they don't believe that the property is actually going to sell or they don't believe that they're going to get the job done to get paid. But if mm -hmm. you knew you could spend $1,500 to make a $10,000 commission, that return on investment is ridiculous. You would do that all day, every day if it was guaranteed. But it comes back to belief. And when you can look mm -hmm. at it as an investment, not an expense, that's what you've done very well, is looking at this as a deposit into your business for that long-term play. Yeah, hundred percent. I think there's also tools, you know, not a lot of people talk about it, but Etsy, super mm -hmm. powerful tool for realtors, because you can get, if you're wanting something, you don't maybe don't have like the design eye or maybe fiber is a little bit too expensive. Like you can get customizable, super cheap, like five, 10, $13 listing packages that you can go back into Canva, change it, put your colors in, but it's all out there. So Etsy, super great tool to start building everything out uh, your way. And I think uh, two other things I wanted to touch on when you do get a listing, you got to leverage it. So when I, you know, pay for all of this, uh, you know, listing package uh, for my listing videos, I repurpose it um, and cut it down for multiple for content in the future too. So it's like you pay for that up front, but now you have all this content in the future. Um, but the other thing is like education. If you have that mindset, be like, oh, I don't know if this is going to sell. Uh, so I'm not going to put my time in it. A, don't take the listing or you're not educating yourself on the market. Because if you, I don't take, I don't take everything that comes my way. Like I had uh, an opportunity to have like a beautiful property um, on the Sunshine Coast, 2 million plus, you know, dollar property we couldn't agree and that's totally fair the homeowner gets this uh, you know set their price and that's totally fine but i i didn't think i could move it and i wasn't going to spend a whole bunch of time and money on something that i didn't get didn't get and i said you know what i it's not for me um and we went uh, our separate ways and it's like if you don't think you can sell it don't take it or you're not educating yourself and you're just taking you know the whole just get the listing and we'll drop the price later 
do not have that mentality. I don't have that mentality because, you know, it's hard to talk sellers down. And if you're spending a ton of money, you are not going to get that back. Um, I've been lucky. I think I'm almost, I'm like 97, 98%. There's only two properties that I, that I've come under my control that I haven't sold. And those were part of a land assembly, which are very, very complicated, but every single residential property I've had, I've been able to sell even through the tough markets, um, because I make sure that I price it properly. And that's, you know, something for a newer agent too. don't just give a price that the seller wants to hear. You're going to waste your time. You're going to waste even more money and you're going to put yourself behind the eight ball. Definitely. No, I completely agree with that. It's it's being very mindful of your business. And a lot of people, as we start going into the shifting market, you know, I saw this, you know, endless amounts of times when I was getting started in 2017 here in Calgary is people are like buying listings, which is they're just taking any listing, agreeing mm -hmm. to any price, just get the listing. But if you actually invest in your business and you don't get the property sold, you're losing money. Like that's not running a business if you're operating at a loss, right? Then I think you've taken a very mindful approach of being very aware and cognizant of, you know, the market and, and educating yourself on that. Now, you know, you've done incredible with content and I think it's not just listing videos, but you also do a ton of other content. Do you want to explain what you've been able to do to build your brand and start to show that you're active, you're present, you're out there, you're, you're, you're knowledgeable at the market? Because I think, you know, you kind of touched on this earlier, but a lot of people are finding you through referrals or, or, you know, on some sort of platform. But what I what I've found through experience is a lot of people go to Instagram to validate you. They're like, Okay, I hear, you know, I heard about Kyle seems like a cool guy got a referral, but like, what's he actually like, yeah. and they'll go to Instagram and, and use that as sort of like a litmus test or a barometer of is he is he active? Is he present? Is he out there? What's he doing? Um, do you want to talk about what kind of content you're putting out to maybe your best piece of advice for people that aren't really leveraging these platforms, maybe because of that limiting belief of they don't have some big vanity metric following. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I, I think like for myself, like I've had, uh, it's been a good start to the year. So lots of listings. So I've been able to have a lot of content. And what I, I said before is like, you got to leverage what you have. So if you spend the money and you get good extended listing videos, you can now chop that all up for endless amounts of content. That's already high quality. You don't have to spend it. For me, um, like back in high school, I was huge into uh, like editing and, and making videos in, uh, in in high school and whatnot. So I enjoy doing that. There's a point of the business where I'm, I'm going to probably have to start hiring that out, but I, I'm so picky and everything. That's why I do it myself because I just don't trust anybody else to do it. But, you know, you can chop once you have some leverage, you can chop that up. Um, you know, I, I've taken listing videos and then turned them into either um, highlights of the area. So what a big part of my, my listing videos is it's yeah, you're buying in the building. So what everyone can see that through the photos, what's the area and once you get in the area, then you can have this endless amount of, you know, future content for property tours, uh, highlights, things of that nature. So um, yeah, I've really leveraged that if you don't have have listings, I mean, you can get out there in front of your camera. Um, you can do like you have the, the map on uh, Social Agent Academy of what you can do for property tours. Um, but it's for me, it's important multiple stories every day just to keep that subconscious top of mind um, posting. I'm trying to post, you know, every day or every second day. It can sometimes feel overwhelming for sure. But it, it your Instagram is for sure the easiest tool right now, I believe, which is like your resume. So it's like make sure that, uh, you know, you're listening to what you know the algorithm saying trends with it within that and make sure that when you post something it's not crap like go into canva have your template so you can throw it in i have like now what i've done is everything essentially looks the same so it's super easy i put it in change a caption try to have a like a catchy uh, description and then within that if your resume looks the same and everything that they go down um it's very very standard and, and it looks good and it's not just like all over the place and you know, um, yeah, that's kind of how, how I, how, how I've done things. Definitely. No, that's, that's super powerful. And I think, you know, one of the overarching themes that I think not a lot of people talk about, but I know you and I've jammed out about behind the scenes is, you know, confidence and belief, because I think, mm -hmm. you know, when, when we kind of unpack a lot of what we talked about today, you've got, you know, investing into your business. Well, a lot of people don't have the confidence to do that because they don't believe that they're going to get the job done or that they've got, you know, the ability to see that through to see the return on the other side or content. A lot of people, you know, know that they need to do these videos, but they don't have the confidence to get in front of the camera and they don't believe that the videos are going to connect or anybody's going to connect with them. So, you know, when it comes to mindset, to belief and, and the 
the which are honestly the number one reasons why agents fail mm -hmm. what what's that journey been like to you to kind of build that confidence to instill that belief into yourself and, and to gain that self-esteem to take action and i think you know i my journey being similar to you, I always found the the amount I invested into my business, which is very, you know, similar to what you've done. It, it is a calculated risk. And but it's a calculated risk because of the fact that, you know, our belief system in ourselves, we, we can see that we can make that work, no matter what that risk is. So what's that journey like for you? What do you do to continue to get outside of your head and just take this this opportunity and go all in with it? Yeah, I think, I mean, I do believe you are born with things depending on your personality and your your traits, right? So uh, for me, I'm, I'm a super type A individual. So confidence my entire life has never been an issue. But with confidence, if you are not educated within whatever space you're in, you're going to look like an idiot and people are going to think, you know, you're super cocky, narcissistic, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it is a fine line. You can be confident, you know, till the cows come home. But if you don't have anything to back that up, it doesn't really mean anything. So for me, I mean, I have my, you know, 11 years of construction background that like really, really helped me um, know for myself that, you know, I, I know real estate. I was uh, made, you know, several uh, real estate purchases before I was even in the space for myself. So, um, you know, I, you know, so that helped me really portray it um, for, for people that even when I was like brand new, I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I know contracts. I know the space. Um, but for agents who may not have that, Baldy, it's you got to educate yourself. You need to get in that space. If you are scared to get in front of the camera or, you know, are speaking to people is a problem, um, you know, go to Toastmasters, something like that, which, you know, you can pay for uh, classes that you can get out there. You practice your public speaking. If you can't public speak, if you can't get in front of the camera, you're not going to be able to attract uh, clients. And furthermore, like within the space, like um, FaceTime is going to be more and more important. You're going to you're going to lose out and people are going to go without someone else where they see that personality online. That's what's going to attract people in. So, you know, pay some money instead of like whatever it is, like your Louis Vuitton little wallet, put that money into Toastmasters, you know, I get get speaking that way, you know, do some online courses. Uh, YouTube's a powerful tool um, just to get on there to, you know, figure out, know your market. Market stats are free. You have all access to that. And then maybe if you don't want to start out in camera, you can, you know, you do one of those, uh, the videos where you're just speaking over top of something with stats or something to get, you know, used to that. And it's a slow roll because this is a long journey. Don't have like the tunnel vision and be overwhelmed because if you don't have the confidence, you're not going to be, make it. And I, I know when I first got in, I didn't really know what I was doing um in in terms of things and i just started door knocking and um you know i, I was able to get you know like 10 million dollars worth of door knocks uh in one specific area and, and get together uh for a land assembly and i had no idea what i was doing and i started you know i rented out like a community center i had like 80 100 neighbors coming out and i had really no idea about the land assembly so i kind of you know figured out i brought in uh, a buddy of mine to, to come in and help things with with that as well um which is a powerful tool if you if you don't know what you're doing ask for help there's people within your office, but what I, I find too is within that um, real estate, it's very cutthroat. So like also be careful who you ask. I mean, I, I hear of like people wanting to do a co-list with someone who's new and the agent's like taking like 60% and or 70%, yeah. you're doing everything. Like make sure it's someone you trust. Um, that's why I think like EXP, um, like the Wolfpack 2 is so uh, powerful you know, join with someone in your area within EXP. They're not going to gouge you. It's a, we're here to like build people up. And I think that's so important. You go to someone else in your office, there's a lot of sharks out there. A, can you trust them? They're going to take advantage of you joining something. And that's why EXP is so unique. And what I didn't know when I joined, because it was a very, I always thought like, I thought EXP was a joke. I'm like, all the loser agents are with EXP. They came through and like, these people have no idea what they're doing. And then it wasn't until I talked to you and then I'm like, oh, that I was completely wrong. And I wish I would have joined so much earlier. Um, but it is powerful with how you have the sponsorship to come in and who you pick as your sponsor is so important. And, you know, if you're new, you can be insulated and you can learn so much. The resources within the Wolfpack are so great. And the experience from agents, what I love too, um, are all from all over the world. Um, and it's it's interesting, especially in the States, because I do find they're so far ahead of what the Canadian market does. You get like something that may not be up here for six months or a year or more, and you'll be able to implement that. And a lot of the stuff is free too. So that's like another thing that, you know, new agents can do is come in, 
join the Wolfpack, join a sponsor, have someone in your market that you can like ask questions to. I know I'm uh, with Louie. Um, he's based in Colorado. There's a lot of new Colorado agents. And I just see on our group calls, like they're, they care, like your sponsors care about you and they want to help you. And they're not there to gouge you and take 50, 60, 70%. A lot of this stuff is free. Yeah, hundred percent, man. No, it's, it's really powerful. And I'm excited to dive a little bit more into that. And I think, you know, there's, there's two things that I kind of want to unpack here before we kind of pull it full circle, which is, you know, you touched on something that's very near and dear to my heart, which is door knocking. And I think this is a very quick conversation, but something that's important, which is, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I just want to put out videos and, and that's all I want to do, or I want to do the, you know, the exciting stuff. And I think it's one of these situations where even with the quality of content, like people are going to look at your amazing videos or they see my content now and they're, they're comparing their chapter one to our chapter 20. And I think also what they're not seeing is they're just seeing me nowadays where I don't have the prospect. I just create content and I have fun doing it. But what they're not seeing is the six months of three hours a day, seven days a week and the rain, snow and hail where I was door knocking and I built the momentum. And that's honestly been probably aside from video, the best way to develop your communication skills and your mm -hmm. confidence, um, because you have to be able to think on your feet. What was your experience like door knocking? Because to me, as somebody that needs more immediate business and doesn't have much money is the best way paired with content to get business right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I was listening to a, a podcast, uh, Alex Ramosi, and he says, you know, for sales, they're like door knocking or get into like a retail job um, is the best, you know, trade like apprenticeship for you to like move forward. And I'm a super confident person and door knocking is not fun. Like yeah. the amount of people that you have like a positive experience, I know, I don't know for you, but for me, like, it, it's it's small like people especially in vancouver you know they've done all this rezoning there's so many realtors hitting those those uh like hot spots so what i learned very quickly it was like i'm not doing hot spots because people are angry they'll swear at you and then you don't want to continue on so i you know pick something that's like in a niche market or market that you know about that's not you know super hot because of like land assembly or things of that nature because you're going to have a lot better um you know, turnaround in terms of like conversations, because if they haven't had a, a lawyer or a lawyer, <laughs> a realtor knock on their door, you know, they're going to be a lot more open to have those conversations. What I've found is the people that have been hammered, they have no time, they don't care. Um, so it's like, pick something that's like off the beaten trail in your market that you know about, have some good material. Like it's an exchange. Like don't like go there and just start like sell mode, like build like some sort of rapport and have something to give. Like it's a service. Give something, whether it's stats or a package, something like that, um, uh, to go into there, and it's it's great because um, even though you know at times like I, I come across well with speaking, but door knocking, you know, you, you can like <laughs> you get into these zones where you're in your head and you start stuttering, but it's good practice, man. Like when you're meeting people, because you know if you're doing open houses or meeting someone at the grocery store and they start grilling you about the market and maybe they want to use you. If you don't have that click on your feet, whether it's like education or what to say, you're going to look like a bubbling idiot. You're going to lose that person. So it's a great free skill. It's hard. It's not easy, um, but you just got to like, you got to pursue, you got to hammer it. Um, I've, I've been lucky. I mean, it's been, you know, I haven't had to do that for a while now. Um, but you know, in, in pockets where I've listened, they'll still get out there and knock because it, it is valuable. And I do, actually like it not more so or so much so for getting the listing but it just kind of does you know refresh me to keep me on my toes talking to someone where i don't have the rapport right away and i'm kind of on my heels and learning that skill and trying to bring somebody in so it's it's valuable even if if you haven't done it for a while or you're a vet, veteran agent too 100 percent, man and in you know you said it, you, know, you hit the nail on the head which is, is it's the best sales experience and i know a lot of people tend to cold call but i i also think you know cold calling is effective it works very well but when it comes to the comparison of which one is better sales experience phone versus in person you know I personally think phone is hiding behind something because, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's very easy for somebody to swear at you on the phone, hang up and it's like, okay, there's, there's no emotion there. But when you're face to face, somebody at their door and they start slamming a door in your face or swearing, like you feel that you're there, there's emotion, you're seeing the person. Um, but also it's the best way to be able to think on your feet and handle objections quickly. So, you know, as we start to pull this full circle, let's talk about coaching. 
and and the importance of you know you, you already kind of touched on this a couple of times is asking questions but i also think it's important to you know always be learning and i think a lot of agents stop learning when the repercussions are immediate like in university in high school where they fail if they don't learn something new um or learn the things they need to do and in real estate the product the you know repercussions are delayed so they just stop they, they just do what they want to do not what they need to do and you know i spend about you know 200 250 dollars a year on on coaching and and guidance to shorten that learning curve and be on the proven path to success what is your what's your journey look like from coaching and then also what's your recommendation for people that you know aren't getting that guidance yeah i i know uh you know when i started in 2020 about wanting to take things serious i worked for about a year on my own and it's like great but i'm like i need systems there's huge things that are lacking like for me i never went to university i went straight into trades when i was 17 years old i don't have any of that like back end computer systems i've kind of i i still do i'm still trying to rein everything in that's great that i'm with louis with time management because a lot of it stays up here um because i don't have that experience but um as you always have to reflect like whether it's like for me it's every day i'm like i'm always in my head what can i do better how can this be better but you know every quarter you look back and you start to see what you're deficient in. you're like okay i need to start looking for a coach so i <clears throat> started asking you know people around that i knew did coaching and the two big ones were uh buffini and then tom ferry buffini it was like more all-encompassing coaching they had real estate life all that I didn't think it was super applicable because I, I wanted something super specific. So I went and I joined up with Tom Ferry. I mean, they'll give you the sales pitch. You know, if you don't hit, let's say like a, a six figures plus on your, whatever your commissions were for the previous year, you'll get all your money back and all their spiel, but you're going to be like the top and blah, 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 blah. So they do a good job of selling you on the phone, getting in there. Um, so I joined and it was, I mean, it was, it was good for sure. It was good. Um, I learned a bunch of things that, uh, you know, in terms of like systems and outlooks and things that uh, I can see because, you know, when you're like the pilot, you're not seeing anything behind you. So when someone's looking in and it was great, but I, I got to a time where I felt like I graduated from the coaching. And um, so at the beginning of this year, you know, I, I, again, cause I'm always like, my wife always gets mad at me. Cause she's like, you, we just got like, you just started this why are you looking at something different or we just moved why are you looking at moving again like i always have to be in a state of movement because i can't settle down i always i'm like well this is a better play this is a better play so you know i looked at my business again at the start of this year i felt like i wanted to get to the next level i needed to make some changes so um i was with you know brokerage fees kind of went up a little bit and i, I said what am i getting from my brokerage and what am i getting from my coach and i'm like i'm spending 1800 dollars a month on coaching it's a lot of money um, and I didn't, I didn't, I'm not getting a return on it at, anymore. And with my brokerage, I'm not getting a return. So, uh, I started looking around, looked in, I uh, touched on it before, you know, EXP and like, you know what, talk to a couple of people. Let's have a chat with Mike, got on the, uh, the call with you was like thoroughly impressed. You put me in touch with Louie. Uh, I spoke further with him and they, you know, shared, you know, what you guys offer within like EXP. And, uh, when I compare it to, you know, the resources, um and everything that's shared in terms of you know systems and templates and packages and the people that what they share within the group now that i'm in it it was far superior than my coaching at tom ferry like it was elementary compared to like university it was way more um, up to date um you know there's a lot more high earners there's so many more people pouring in and then you get the benefit of you who has like your coach who is unbelievable and you're learning from him and then you're passing everything down and it's this downward funnel where it's like i get to be the beneficiary of all this stuff not not only from you but like from my sponsor and then everything within my group so it was like it, you know it's you say it so i'm like no brainer i save money on i save money on my brokerage fees i have the opportunity for rev share i have stock options it's cheaper than my brokerage and i'm saving 1800 dollars at tom ferry and i'm getting so much more out of that like just a complete no brainer uh, for me. So, you know, not to throw shade on like Tom Ferry, like I had a great time with my coach. It just got to a point where um, I needed something more and uh, I got more and it was free. So it was just, you know, a financial decision. It was a very easy decision. Um, and I know that, you know, they're within my group, there's been a lot of people leaving because uh, they're wanting something more. And I can tell everybody who's looking or if you have a coach, whoever it is, like, join exp have a chat with me have a chat with mike have a chat with louie and see exactly what you get 
for free and you're going to be saving money on your brokerage fees too. 100% man. I think, you know, one of the most important things and, and I love having you a part of the family is like, you know, I found becoming a part of this ecosystem really reignited my passion for the industry because, you know, as you alluded to with sharks being a broker days, you know, I was at my past brokerage and it's, it's the old adage of, you know, none of the top producers want to share their best information. And when I was a new mm-hmm. agent, I wasn't getting any help from any of the top agents because I saw that I was driven ambitious and it would have created competition within the office. And then I became that top producer and I didn't want to share my best information because then they were all going to do it in the same market center. But with this opportunity, you're not just working with people that you love and are like brothers and sisters because you attract the type of people that you are, um, but you're you're financially incentivized and driven to help other mm-hmm. people in your ecosystem win and share everything because you're all partners. So I love that you kind of touched on that. And I think that that brings it to the last kind of you know thing to discuss is, you know, what does it look like to partner with you? Because you've got a wealth of experience. Louis, you can touch on that. And, and I obviously, you know, have a, uh, a decent handle on a few things but you know there's going to be a lot of people this year during the market shift that are looking for better training better tools an ecosystem where they feel a part of something and that they're not just like this lone wolf so for people looking to reach out to you and have that discussion what does that look like yeah no for me is my attention to detail is is massive and for if you want to up your brand if you want to understand how to talk to people or get educated I can definitely help you with that. I have spent, it's been three years of building everything like up and I know exactly you want to do this, go into this direction. You want to do this, get in that direction. If you want to understand like building construction or how to talk to people, things of that nature, I can definitely help guide you with that. But it's more so creating that overall brand um, and partner with me, you get access to, you know, my group with Louis. So for me, my biggest deficiency still is systems. And Louis, my sponsor, is all about systems, Trello boards, time management. So what I've been learning, I'll be able to like mentor you with that. And not only with that, you'll get access to the Wolfpack Elevation group as well. But, you know, for me, it's just teaching you how to be confident teaching you to, you know, f- identify things within your life that maybe you should cut out, understanding hard conversations that you may have to do within your business or your personal life to stay focused and uh, to have that discipline. I'm extremely disciplined um, with my life. Um, you know, it comes back to, you know, playing sports, uh, growing up, being in the fire department, which, you know, military organization. So it's like discipline will get you through that mud and having that long-term vision. I love goal setting. I love figuring out how you can like maneuver. I think life is, you know, like a big puzzle or a big game. It's like, how can you move this to like, uh, you know, move those pieces up. So that's something that, you know, you can get with me is to make sure that if you want to take things to the next level, you want to stand out, I can totally help you with that. And then you can pair with me and with Louis to get your systems in check. And then you can for sure be a well-oiled machine and you can get that confidence to get into the marketplace to succeed. 100% man I I, you know I think your journey is absolutely incredible and I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to take a lot away from this conversation today so I'm really excited and again as mentioned I'm going to link all of Kyle's information below his social media profile so you can check them out as well as link to book a call with him and talk about what that partnership with Kyle Louie and myself looks like where we can help you take your business to the next level over the next couple of years so Kyle thanks so much for coming on man and pouring into everyone. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. It was a blast. And uh, hopefully there's a bunch of people out there that have some more questions and want some follow up. It's it's important. You can make it for sure. You just need to partner with the right people. 100%. Well, we're that family and hopefully we get to welcome some of you into it. So thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out Kyle's stuff. We'll see you in the next video.